in early 2020, right across the globe. Entire populations of towns, cities, and nations were plunged into coronavirus lockdown. From country to country, it brought out the best in humanity. Heroes were produced on a daily basis. This is the story of the small northern English town of Barmydale, where some have been heroic and others, well. Blinking heck, Dan. Can you keep the noise down? Hey, no, I can't. I need to get this beer barrel from here to there. It's one of the many joys of owning a pub. Well, I'd like a few less joys of living across the road from a pub. You've woken me and Gracie up. Two metres, Keith, come on. I am two blooming metres. And don't change the subject. I'm sick of putting up with it. Ten years, Gracie, and I have had this. You moved in 11 years, 5 months and 13 days ago. Well, it's about time you started showing more consideration, then. This is a time of national emergency, this is. Oh, no doubt I'll see you again later, banging your little saucepan for the NHS. There's nothing wrong with my little saucepan. You and your pretentious wok, on the other hand. Hey, that wok's a beauty. It has a beautiful Asian ring to it. You trust me. Those nurses in number 55 know who supports them the most. Time to get up, Gracie, love. (sighs) What time is it? Thursday. Come on, get up. We've only got 12 hours before NHS clapping time. And don't want to be outdone again by that idiot Dan from the pub and his stupid walk. Oh, how long have you both had this silly thing going on between you? It's a forces thing. I was British Army, he was Royal Navy. But weren't you on the same side? Same side? Don't be daft. Now get up. Oh, all right, I'll get up. Where have you been? What are you doing with that beer barrel? What do you mean? Oh, I'm not stupid, Dan. Oh, that'll do nicely. Why are you banging it? No, I'm not banging it. I'm testing it to see if it needs to go back to the brewery. Oh, you must think I was born yesterday. This is to do with your stupid rivalry with that keys from across the road, isn't it? Now then, I was cheated, you know that. Oh, you've shown me that CCTV footage God knows how many times, and I still can't see him moving the black ball. Well, he did. And I'll never forget it. Right. Here's what I want you to do. Next year, you will see a pen and paper. Yes, I see it. You will notice that on the paper there is a list. Pan one, pan two, pan three. Yes, yes, etc, etc, up to pan fifteen. Now then, in a moment, I'm going to bang each pan and I want you to score them out of five in each of those three categories. Depth of sound, sustained ringing, and how much the pan will annoy Dan. Got it? I suppose so. Oh, it's like having Big Ben in the living room. Stay concentrated. Wait a minute, that's me, oven. I thought I'd make us a nice quiche for tea. Don't run off. Oh, for Pete's sake. That was a good spot of tea, even if I do say so myself. Oh. What's that Dan doing over the road? What is he doing? He's got a beer barrel outside his front door. He's got what? Out of the way, woman, let me see. (gasps) What time is it? Ten to eight. Where are you going? Gracie, come here. I'm in the loft. What's going on up there? I'm looking for that giant paella pan we got in Spain that time. What do you want that for? It's for the NHS. What do they need with a paella pan? I'm going to show that Dan who supports the NHS round here. Is that really necessary, love? Ah! Found it! Is it heavy? You don't have to take it from me. I don't think I can carry it, love. Love, really, I can't hold it. I I can't! Ah! Are you all right, dear? It landed on my foot. It'll be worth it, don't you worry. We'll show him. Oh, it really hurts. I'm not sure it will be worth it. You hold the handle. Oh! 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 Quickly, woman. It's going to be late. Oh! Oh! So the nurses in number 55 can see it. Look at Dan's face. See the jealousy in his eyes. Uh, sure, I can tell. Damn it. I forgot to bring someone to hit it with. 
Hold on to it, love. I'll be right back. No, Keith! I can't hold it! No, no! Back in a minute. I can't believe you did it without me! Nice one, Keith! NHS will love you for that! Shall I call an ambulance? Oh, get it off me! I'm trapped under it! I can't, love! It's too heavy! <sighs> hmm... Your eyes are still a bit glazed over, Gracie. I'll call 111. Hello? I'm calling about the wife. She is with me, yes. No, she sustained an injury. She was crushed by a giant paella pan. Paella. Paella. Pa oh, blinking neck, do I have to say it again? Ooh, paella. I am sorry. I it's hard to tell if she's confused. She's always a bit confused. How many fingers am I holding up, love? She's not talking to me. Well, now she's stuck up two fingers, but I don't think that's because she's concussed. No, I was holding up five fingers. Are you not following what's going on? She was out in the street banging it in support of you lot, but I don't know why she bothered based on this conversation. Is there anything I can do for her? Is that it? Blimey. She said you need to take some paracetamol. Honestly, do they ever prescribe anything else? I'll go and get you some. <laughs> Here we go, love. Two paracetamol and a glass of water. Love? Where are you, love? Gracie? Oh, bloomin' heck. She's gone. Hello? Get me the police. The wife's gone. No, she's not left me. Why would she leave me? She's had a bang on her head. I think she's concussed and gone walkabout. A giant paella pan. Paella. Paella. Oh, paella! Yes, exactly. Blimey, there needs to be some language consistency to your... Just get the police over. Oh, it's you, Keith. Oh, very warm welcome, thank you. What do you want? Just wondering if you've seen our Gracie. No, not since she was underneath a paella pan. I think she's concussed. I found the front door wide open and she's gone. Well, sounds like she's finally come to her senses, if you ask me. Oh, that's nice. What's going on here, then? Gracie's gone missing. <laughs> Finally come to a census, has she? Oh, that's original, Dan. <laughs> she could be anywhere by now. I might never see her again, and all you two can do is make jokes. Sorry, Keith. How long has she been gone? About two minutes. Uh, well, we'll help you look, won't we, Dan? Uh, I've already been out for my once-daily permitted walk. I'm not sure I'm allowed. No, I'm sorry, Keith. Dan? Oh, blooming heck. All right, then. I'll stay here, in case she comes back. <sighs> Where do you think she'll be? If I knew where she'd be, I'd have gone there, wouldn't I? Do you not have an instinct? An instinct? Well, a gut feeling about where she might go. Oh, you're getting very esoteric all of a sudden. No, I don't have a gut feeling. She's had a bang on the head and gone mental. She could be anywhere. <sighs> all right, let's go to the top of the street and see if we can see her on the main road. Here we are. Oh, she's nowhere to be seen. Plumbing heck. No, 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 she's over there at the bus stop, look. The number 22 is coming. Come on, quick, before she catches it. Love? Gracie! Don't get on the bus! Oh no, she's waving it down. She's getting on it. She's flashed him a freedom pass and she's sitting down. Driver, wait up! Hang on, driver. We've got to take off one of your passengers. My wife's concussed. She doesn't want to go to Leicester. She doesn't know what she's doing. Hello, love. Where are you going? To see Gary Lineker. Gary Lineker? Oh dear, it's worse than I thought. Come on, up you get. Walk this way. What do you want to see Gary Lineker for? He's got to be stopped. Ah, well I see your point, love. But let's just concentrate on putting one foot in front of the other. He's not obeying the social distancing rules. He's in our living room every chance he gets. Oh, he's a menace. Bloomin' heck. All right, love. There's a step here. Put your foot down on the road. That's it. Well done. No, no. Where are you going, love? Home is this way. 
We'll have to carry her. I'll take her ankles and you hold her head. I'll take her ankles. She'll never forgive me if she flashes you at Marks and Spencer's finest. Ugh, blimey. There's a bit of weight in her. Oh, this is going to be a long walk. It's the police. They must be responding to my call. They can take her back. Officer! Officer! Oi, you there. Put down the old woman. Old woman? This is my wife, this is. Are you all members of the same household? You what? Are you all members of the same household? No, officer. He's my neighbour. He's helping me get her home. He needs to put her down and get two metres. Don't drop her. Oops. Oh, sorry, Gracie. How did I get here? I think that's done the trick. What's going on? You're in the street, love. We're going home. Oh, the last thing I remember was a paella pan coming towards me. Paella pan, love. That's how it's pronounced. Really? Well, I never knew that. Oh, you learn something new every day, don't you? Ah, love. You do. In the days that followed, Keith locked himself in his shed, where he worked for hours on an invention that he was sure would change the world, freeing everyone from the threat of coronavirus. Here it is. What do you think? It's a stick. It's not any old stick. It looks like it to me. It's not just a stick. First of all, it has been sandpapered until it's perfectly smooth. Feel that. Ooh, it is smooth. Secondly, it's been varnished with top-of-the-range wood protector. Oh, it's all over my hands now, isn't it? Oh. And thirdly, it is precisely straight and two metres long. It's still a stick, Keith. No, this is a social distancing enforcement device. You hold it facing outwards from your navel, like so, and no one can encroach on your two metres personal space. I see. Oh, it's very sharp at the end. This stick, as you call it, could save thousands of lives. It's going to be the next big thing. You think so? I imagine governments across the world will be clamouring for this. The only problem with this idea will be how to produce them fast enough. Ooh. I'm taking it with me on my daily walk. Are you sure you want to take it with you? What if someone steals the idea? Don't be daft. What about that Dan in the pub across the road? You two are always fighting. That idiot couldn't manufacture one of these if he tried. And I'm definitely showing him. Trust me, I want to see the look on his smug face. OK. Oh, be careful, love. Oh, don't go out the back. You're best avoiding the alley. It's too tight for social distancing rules. Oh, dear. Oh, hello, Dan. What are you doing in the alley? Excuse me, Keith. Come on, I need to get past. Uh, 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 stay the required distance, please. Oh, come on, Keith. Step aside, then I can get about my business. I wish I could, Dan, but rules are rules. What are you doing with that stick? I might have known your eye would be immediately drawn to this. This, Dan, is a social distancing enforcement device. An SDED, for short. What? SDED. Carefully crafted to be exactly two metres long. Oh, you're not serious. Deadly? Yes, deadly. Don't be daft. Anyone who encroaches within two metres of me will receive a sharp upwards jab to the ribs. Oh, look, Keith. Sharon sent me half a toilet paper. If I don't come back with some, there'll be hell to pay. I sympathise, Dan. I do. It's not easy keeping the missus sweet, especially yours. But is it a reason to put my life in danger? No. You'll have to reverse to the end of the alley and we can pass each other there. Oh, this, this is ridiculous. Excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, would you mind standing to the side of the alley so I can pass? There's no chance, sunshine. Turn around and go back up to the street. I say, don't sunshine me. I have every right to pass through here. Oh, so Her Majesty's government guidelines don't apply to you? Now, listen here. All I want to do is get on with my legally permitted daily walk. It's only legally permitted if you are obeying the social distancing rules. Ah, quite right, quite right. Go on, back you go. That's an absolute farce. Stop prodding me with that stick. This is a social distancing enforcement device. It's exactly two metres. If you're getting prodded, it's because you're within my two metre zone. No, no, you keep following me. Now look here, excuse me, officer. Yes, sir. How can I help? I'd just like to pass these gentlemen, but they won't let me through. We were just explaining the social distancing rules, officer. Well, that's all well and good, but I think I'd better confiscate that stick. This is an S-dead prototype, this is. I can't just hand this over. A what, dead? Estead. 
A social distancing enforcement device. I enforce the social distancing rules, not your stick. Now hand it over. This is a lifesaver, this is. Take it and you could be killing me and putting the lives of millions of my potential customers at risk. It's just a stick. Carefully crafted to be precisely two metres long. Hold it sideways. I need to measure it. Yeah, look at that. One metre and 99 centimetres. One centimetre short. Which suggests to me it's nothing more than a stick and not what you claim, sir. Now step aside and let this gentleman pass. Oh, yeah, thank you, officer. Ah, he stabbed me. He did it to himself but not keeping two metres away. Is this true, sir? Did you encroach? You have been warned that failing to keep two metres apart is dangerous and could result in someone dying. I, I don't know whether you've noticed, but I'm actually losing quite a lot of blood. Everyone get two metres away from him. He might have it. I haven't got it. Well, I read on the internet that bleeding might be a symptom. Step back. Hey, oh, it's that Stacy, nurse from number 55. Oh, my. There she is. Keep your stick down, Keith. Keep it down. <sighs> What's going on here? Are you all right, sir? What happened? Oh, that one stabbed me while the other one egged him on. You two should be ashamed of yourselves. We were just protecting the NHS, making sure he adhered to the social distancing rules. Don't you think I have enough to do already? Officer, you need to call him an ambulance and then I hope you'll be arresting these two. Right, you two. You're nicked. Oh, nice one, Keith. You know what you can do with that stick, don't you? Can I just phone the wife and tell her I won't be back as expected? Hello? Hello, love. Just letting you know that I've been arrested and so won't be back for tea. Oh, is it because of your stick? It's a social distancing enforcement. Yeah, it was my stick. Oh, dear. I told you not to go out the back. Fortunately, perhaps because the police were still struggling to get used to the new coronavirus guidelines, Keith and Dan were soon released from custody without charge. But Keith was not so easily released from his shame, so he devised a plan to make amends. Ooh, it's up today, isn't it? I've written a letter of apology to the nurses in number 55. I know Stacy, but what's the name of the other one? I don't know, love. Hold the fabric up. How many scrubs do you think we can finish today? Two or three. Is that it? I need to give the nurses more than that. I want to make amends for accidentally stabbing that fella outside their house. We can't afford to have a bad reputation with the NHS, you know. Not at our age. I'm doing my best. Oh, I'm drooping. I'm just popping across the road, love. Keith, what do you want? Just happen to be wondering what the name of that other nurse is at number 55. What, Stacy? No, the other one. Tracy? Stacy and Tracy. Are they twins? No, oh, they're not twins. What's that in your hand? Nothing. Is it a letter? No. Hey, give it back. Oh, oh, oh this is interesting. Oh, so you're making amends, are you? Hmm, possibly. I haven't really given it much thought. All oh, right. Well, I'll see you around then, Keith. Sharon. I'm in here. Right, we need to do something nice for those nurses at number 55. It needs to be good, and we need to do it first. First? Oh, did I say first? I meant fast. Why are the sudden concern for the nurses? Well, I just think they're going through a tough time. We should be there for them. In it together and all that. Oh, Dan. I think that's lovely. Well, I'm that kind of bloke, aren't I? So, what would be a good gesture for them? I don't know, but a good gesture for me would be if you stopped coming in here without washing your hands. Here, get some of this hand sanitizer on. Oh, that's it. That's it. I've got a pub full of alcohol going to waste. We can make hand sanitizer for them. Tracy, we've got competition. That idiot Dan is stealing our idea of making amends. We've got to make sure that what we do is better and that we get it to the nurses first. I'm working as fast as I can already. Turn your sewing machine around to face the window. What for? This way, you can sew and keep watch at the same time. Any sign of Dan taking someone to number 55, let me know. Oh, Dan's leaving the pub. <gasps> He's getting in his car. Is he? Maybe an opportunity for some reconnaissance. I'm just popping across the road, love. Oh, Dan. You've left your shed door open, I see. Uh-huh. He's preparing somewhat in here, for sure. Oh, look at this. Schoolboy error, Dan. A printout of how to make hand sanitizer. 
So that's his plan. I've just seen Keith climbing through our edge. He's on to us. He's going to try and outdo us with those nurses. You need to call his wife and find out what he's up to. I thought you were doing something for the nurses out of the goodness of your heart. Well, I don't be daft. Now pick up the phone. Hello. Hi, Gracie. It's Sharon from across the road. Hello, pet. Just thought I'd call, see what you're up to. Oh, just making scru... What's that, Gracie? Nothing. What did you say you're making? Just making tea for Keith. I'd better go. He hates it if I leave the bag in for too long. What What? What? what did she say? She's making scru... Scru? That's all I could get. Oh, scr- uh, scrubs. He's got a sewing scrubs. Oh, and a sanitizer beats scrubs any day of the week. By the way, where do you put all those bottles? In the conservatory. You can't leave them in there in this heat. It's combustible stuff, that is. Eight sets of scrubs. Well done, love. I'll put them in a box in the porch for now, then we can have a cuppa, and after that I'll take them over to number 55. All right, love. Sharon, look at this. Keith has left a box in his porch. Bring the binoculars. Oh, you're like an old woman twitching her neck curtains. I can see inside it. It's a box of scrubs, all right. I hope he's back with masking tape to close it up. And now Gracie's bringing him a cup of tea. Now he's gone again. Well, you have to be quick if you want your hand sanitizer with the nurses first. I can do better than that. We've got a box just like that one of Keith's, haven't we? Oh, Dan, you wouldn't switch boxes on him. Well, I would. <laughs> and with a nice letter inside from us. Hello, Stacey. It's Keith from number 46. I'm just going out for my shift. I see. Well, I wanted to bring this over. The wife and I have been making a little summit for you and Tracy. Oh, that's very good of you. Least we could do. I'll just leave them here in the porch for now. It's so hot in here, but it'll be fine, won't it? Oh, yes. No problem. Have a good shift. Do no harm. <laughs> good one, Keith. <laughs> Well, Gracie, job well done. Oh, thank you, love. What the heck was that? Oh, no. Number 55 has exploded. For the second time that week, Keith and Dan found themselves in police custody. To their surprise, it was also the second time that they were released without charge. This was luck neither of them knew they had. In his excitement, Dan immediately called his wife to tell her the good news. But it was a phone call he would soon regret, as rather than reacting with joy, it had started his wife thinking. Hello? Gracie, it's Sharon from across the road. Hello, pet. I've had a call from Dan, and he says that the police have released him and Heath. Oh, what a relief. But when they get home, I say we confront them over this stupid rivalry of theirs. It's got to stop. I agree, Sharon. It's gone too far. Dan, Keith, sit down on the wall there. Oh, dear. Two metres, Keith. I am two metres. Oh, stop bickering. We brought you together because we need to resolve this rivalry between you. Well, what rivalry? I don't have a rivalry with anyone. You're making some out of nothing, you are, Sharon. Something out of nothing? You just got back from the police station. In the last few days, your rivalry has caused Gracie to be crushed under a giant paella pan. Our new neighbour's been stabbed. The number 55 is blown up. Well, well, of course. It sounds bad if you put it like that. And it's about time it's stopped. You two need to start getting along. Gracie and I have decided, haven't we? We have, pet. We want you to join forces and work together on something useful for the community. Join forces? Yes, Dan. With each other? Yes, Keith. We've got to leave you to think about it. And don't move until you have a plan. Got it? Aye, aye. Do you think this idea will work? What do you mean? It's golden, this is. What's better than Barmydale's own neighbourhood Covid watch? Well, I prefer not to have to join forces with you, but I have to admit it's not a bad idea. Right then, let's crack on. Quiet, please. 
Welcome to the first of Barmerdale's new Neighbourhood Covid Watch meetings, a record of which will be put online to prove to Sharon and Gracie that we're doing it. I'll start with taking it register. Dan? Right, present. Keith? Present. First order of business, how to ensure the population of Barmerdale stays alert and upholds the necessary social distancing rules. Ideas from the floor are welcome. Uh, you mean me? Who else would I mean? There's no one else here. Well, we could just walk up and down the street and tell people if they're doing anything wrong. All those in favour? Let the record show that this motion was passed unanimously. Well done, Dan. Now let's get out there and clean up this neighbourhood. All right. I'll take this side of the road, and you take the other side. Wouldn't it be easy if I took my side of the road, which is this side of the road, and you take your side of the road, which is the other side of the road? Stop confusing things, Dan. We'll do an hour on our sides and then swap. Uh, hey, oh, look sharp. Someone's coming. He's got a stick. I think he's carrying one of your estates. A social distancing enforcement device? It's the very same. Oh, unless it's just a stick. It looks the same length as one of my estates. And he's even taken trouble to paint it white. He's stolen your idea, Keith. Oi! You there! Where'd you get that white stick from? Me? Aye, you. Who else do you think I'd be talking to? I got it from the NHS. The NHS? I knew it was a good idea. The government have stolen it. This is a right liberty. How long is it? Are you talking to me? Yes, I'm talking to you. How long is your estate? Hand it over. I want to measure it. I don't want to hand it over. You have to. We're neighbourhood watch. We are, aren't we, Dan? We are, Keith. Come on, sunshine. Hand it over. I need to measure it for copyright purposes. Oh, look here. Two metres precisely. It's an estate, all right. I'm afraid I'll have to confiscate this, and you'll be hearing from my lawyer. You can't take it from me. I use it because I'm visually impaired. Well, I am sorry that you are visually impaired, but that doesn't give you the right to steal my ideas. You'll have to tell the NHS you want your money back. Now get along with you. I can't without my stick. It's not a blooming stick. It's a social distancing enforcement device. Now turn around and get on with you. Keith. Not now, Dan. I'm dealing with someone's important here. Keith. Oh, what's he doing now? He's wandering aimlessly down the middle of the road. Is he drunk or something? Keith. Blow my neck, Dan. What is it? He's blind. It's not an S dead. It's a white cane. Oh, no. Sharon and Gracie are going to kill us. Hey! Get out of the road! You'll get run over! Hey, oh, it's Stacy, nurse from number 55. Oh, aye, it is. What's she saying? Get out of the road! Oh, no, that car's gonna hit the blind man if he doesn't see him. He's not gonna see him if he's blind, is he? Oh, not him, the driver! Oh, we're gonna have to do something. Push him out of the way! Me? You push him out of the way! We're equal members of Neighbourhood Watch. Oh, we'll have to do it together then. Oh, blow my neck! Driver! <laughs> Don't move. I just want to assess your injuries. Oh, hello, Stacey. Oh, hello, Stacey. It's Keith from number 46. The man you saved is fine. He's sitting safely on the curb. Dan! Keith! Oh, no. It's the wives. We're in for it now. Oh, Dan, are you OK? Oh, oh. Speak to me, love. They saved a man's life. They're heroes. Oh, Dan, I am proud. Oh, it was just instinct. Oh, natural for a couple of X-Forces elites. My hero. Oh, just doing my bit for community, love. Barmy Dale starred Juliet Howland as Gracie, Camilla Simpson as Sharon, Stuart Wielden as Dan, Martin Skellen as Keith, Mia Mills as Stacey, and John Skellen as the man with the stick. The music was composed by Jordan Freighter. The audio editor was Matt Winch. And the show was written by Skellen and Wielden for Barmy Productions.